Hi, this is Jay Sykes with a hopefully helpful video talking about removing a toilet seat from a one-piece toilet. Now, quick background, I'm not a professional carpenter, plumber, handyman, or anything like that. Just trying to do some renovation and help some people out. If you have some tips that I missed, please let me know. So here's the deal. This particular home we got, it was um, obviously older home had a one-piece toilet and the toilet seat itself was kind of beat up so I wanted to replace it. So the hassle was there was some bolts on there that would not budge. I tried a big screwdriver, did not work. I tried a power driver and that just began to strip the top of the bolt. So I did some research online to find out this is apparently a very common problem. It's a big hassle and one video showed a guy putting a piece of wood like this, then using a pry bar and just trying to pry the bolt out. And then according to Kohler, they recommend either you taking a hacksaw to cut the bolt off or taking a drill to drill out the bolt. Now, no videos kind of mentioned taking the seat off, which is a real hassle in itself. Now, quick tip, before you begin any kind of toilet seat removal of a stuck toilet seat, please take off the toilet tank cover because that can chip easily. It can get hit by your drill, by your pry bar or something else. It just You want to avoid breaking it because it's an expensive thing to replace if you have to replace it. Anyway, so this is a one-piece toilet. So one piece means that the tank and the bowl are just combined together. There is a hidden anchor, it's called. So when a toilet seat is in there, there is a bolt to secure it. But down below, there is a hidden anchor. There's no water, there's no like wing nut or nut you can reach below and get it. You cannot reach below it to access that. And over time, apparently the bolt and the anchor become, I think welded or melded, there's probably a better term for that, but they basically become corroded and become stuck together and you cannot take it out. So anyway, the guy in the video took a pry bar and you know popped it out. I thought, okay, great, let me try that. So the step one was to take a toilet seat out. And that was a real pain because I basically had to cut it out. So the first step, thing I, the first thing I did, I took a Dremel tool and just kind of cut this part. I'll show you here. This is actually the replacement toilet. I cut just to leave this part only in there basically. So I cut that off, okay, fine. Now there's a piece of plastic stuck between your bowl and the top of the bolt. And that was a hassle to take off as well. It just wouldn't budge out. So I put some masking tape. I put much more, this is just an example, but I put tape all around here, then took the Dremel and tried to go kind of in a, a horizontal. And that was kind of a hassle. I was afraid of scratching this porcelain, even though there's tape, this can scratch because the RPMs are yeah, pretty decent. Anyway, so I then at that point took a hacksaw, hacksaw blade anyway, and begin to kind of saw horizontally. I use this little scraper here as a, a barrier. And this wood was not here, obviously. I just put this flat and kind of went like that in a horizontal fashion. I made a series of horizontal cuts in the plastic, hoping it would loosen it, but it did not. It just was still stuck. It would not rotate, it wouldn't budge. So, okay, fine. Um, it wouldn't work. I took a different saw. Let me see if I can find that. This little fun Japanese saw. It's actually flexible. It's pretty good for house projects. It's um, flexible and very fine. That worked a little better because I can kind of go in there at different angles with this little saw. So once again, I was trying to cut this plastic away from this bolt. It took about 30 minutes to take the seat off altogether between the plastic. It just was a pain in the butt. Once I had a series of cuts in the plastic, I began to kind of chip away bit by bit and it came off. Sorry guys. It did not come off in one chunk. It was, it was a real hassle. Okay, fine. So now we have the toilet seat off and there was a bolt still there that was stuck in. So I tried the pry bar method. It not, did not budge. This was like a, a huge mess. I should have, I should have um, taken a photo anyway. It was a huge thing of just, um, I don't know what you would call it, just corrosion and a big blob of metal. Now the video where the guy took the pry bar, he showed you the bolt and you could see threads in the anchor. This particular one, you couldn't even see threads. It was so corroded. So anyway, I didn't want to chip anything. The pry bar was not working. So I said, okay, fine. Let's try the official Kohler solution. So they recommend taking a hacksaw to cut the bolt away and or drilling the bolt. Got the hacksaw again. 
I made a series of kind of cuts horizontal. It was very inefficient because you can't get good travel. You're gonna hit this part. You can't get a good motion. If you try and go here, your hand's gonna hit like the toilet bowl. This is very inefficient. So it was a series of small horizontal cuts to get that bolt, you know, to come up. It was a real hassle. Once again, please put some tape here as a reminder to not, you know, hit that and scratch it. But um, this was a real hassle, guys. I used a hacksaw with a small little handle here, and it took about maybe half an hour to hack both of these guys off. And guess what? When I hacked them off, now I had um, part of a bolt, but it would not budge. It was just there. I wouldn't say it was a waste of time, but it did not accomplish my goal. So, okay, fine, let me try a drill. So at that point, I got some drill bits. And when you drill through steel, you have to use um, cobalt or titanium. This is a cobalt one, I'll show you real quick. This was kind of the pilot hole to get it going. And then I used a bigger one. And you can see this is really ground down quite a bit. This was longer and sharper when I first began, but when you cut through steel, you're gonna really grind away your drill bits. This is a, a cobalt drill bit once again. This was longer when I first began. Now it's all stubby and short. It just really eats away your drill bits. It took about half an hour to drill both of these. It was a real pain in the butt. The other hassle, there was so much corrosion here, I couldn't really tell where the center was. It was a big blob. Um, there was apparently a washer here that was also kind of, I don't know what you call it, welded to the anchor. It was just a huge blob of a mess. And so drilling through, I had no idea, A, how big a diameter was, or B, where the center was. So I had to kind of recorrect re -correct myself a few times to get the accurate drilling. That was a big hassle. So, okay, fine, I drilled through, and then when I drilled through the end, I think the bolt kind of cracked in half and fell through. So it went down to this cavity, and that's why I can't show it to you. It's down there somewhere. And there we go. Now we have an empty hole here, which is actually 3 8 inch in diameter. I measured it. This one has already put an anchor, I think an anchor nut, it's called. Anyway, so, okay, now we have an empty hole. We have a seat. We need to secure that somehow. I bought this thing on Amazon. They say universal, universal um, anchor with a bolt. It didn't work. It was too big, okay? So I did some more research, and I found this, actually, it's built for kayaks. And what you have here is this anchor nut here with a stainless steel bolt. And please try and find stainless steel. It's more corrosion resistant. You're trying to prevent the same thing from happening again. So I found this, it was like 10 bucks, pretty inexpensive. And this actually fit in there perfectly. This is 3 8 inch diameter, so it fit in there pretty easily. And on the right, you can see this one is already in there. This is the empty hole. So inexpensive, and it seems to be a good solution. So when you put this in, what I recommend is using plastic washers, once again, to prevent the same thing, that same corrosion from happening. So the plan I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this little anchor thing in there, a plastic washer, the toilet seat, a plastic washer, and then you're gonna put your bolt in there. That's kind of the sequence of events I wanna do here. I'll leave a link to this down below. It's pretty handy. I think this is actually made for kayaks. And I'll show you kind of how it works. So this is um, some paperwork that came, as you can see here. You have your anchor, you have your bolt. So you put, you know, your washer, your toilet seat washer, and then you're gonna take this in. As you begin to tighten this, it actually kind of raises up. And then at that point, it's gonna make a nice seal. That's the whole point behind it. Now, even though it's stainless steel, we're trying to, you know, use plastic where possible. I recommend using some anti-seize grease on your threads. This particular one is marine. I prefer the marine, this is metal free. This is good for a variety of things, including gun parts, suppressors you can use this for. I think this is good because it's a high temp and it's good all purpose. There's no metal in there. Um, this is Loctite, the brand I use, so I prefer that metal free. But the point is you need some kind of anti-seize grease on your threads to prevent the same thing from happening where it gets kind of stuck and you know, corrosion binds it all together. So quick summary, guys. Hope this was helpful for you. If you have any more tips I missed, let me know down below in the comments. Oh, and then um, to take a step back, you know, it, it, you're kind of screwed here because I had most of the tools. I had Dremel, I had the saw. 
I went out and bought the blade, sorry, the handle for the hacksaw blade to make it easier. And I went out and bought some cobalt drill bits just to, you know, to drill through that. So, you know, I spent about maybe, oh, and also the anchor kit. I spent probably about, I don't know, 20 bucks on all this stuff. But I can imagine if you don't have any tools, you have to go buy all this stuff, which is a real hassle. So, you know, anyway, please do not buy a one piece toilet. It's not worth it. It's a real hassle. This one came with the house. We had no choice. I'm just trying to make the best of it and change the toilet seat. But I do not recommend buying a one piece toilet seat. If you do have one, um, I would say as soon as possible, take out your bolts and either change it or put some anti-seize grease. If you ever do install a toilet seat, please use some anti-seize grease. It's gonna make your life easier. Let me know what you guys think down below. This is Jay Sykes, hoping you have a nice day, if possible. Bye.